welcome back. And in this video, I'm going to go over a custom motor build that I've been working on for about a year, uh, where I take a 1.9 liter core and a 2.3 liter turbo diesel crank from a 90s Frontera, and I make a 2.5 liter out of them. Now, this could be done with a 2 liter block, and also it could be done with a 2.4 block. But if you have a 2.4 block, it's not necessary. You can still get the same, the same pistons I'm using for my 2.4 but you don't have to go into the piston steering I'm going to have to be doing on this. Now, piston steering is its not something that uh, apparently is out there a lot. You, I can't find, could not find a whole lot of information online about it or anywhere else for that matter. The piston steering is a, um, done in a lot larger motors, uh, so it's not uncommon. It's just not normally done in an automotive situation, especially a smaller displacement motor. Uh, Volvo did it in a couple of their motors, but that's about the only information I can find. So I'm going to go into why I'm doing piston steering, what it is. Let's get started and start showing you around this block. The first part of the recipe to get the 2.5 out of a 1.9 block is the bore. And in this case, we're using 96.7 millimeter bore pistons. And as you can see, our head gasket here is 97 millimeters. So it works to be exactly how big we can go. We can't go much bigger than that. Uh, companies like Cometic head gaskets, which are multi-layer steel, it's got a steel core and uh, these are you can get them in different thicknesses to lower your compression if you wanted to go say in this case i've went with a a dish piston i'm running roughly this is going to run on pump gas at roughly 9.2 compression to, to one compression ratio um, as you can see we had to custom uh, do a trough here to clear the valves uh, i'm using a much bigger valve on these i use a 185 and uh, for the intake and a 1.5 exhaust for these motors as well. So that's pretty much it. It's just a standard board. Now, it, does, it is getting pretty thin on the block when you get to that large. Now, the, the big deal here is that once you've built this motor, there's, uh, you, you, can't, you can reuse the pistons later if you wanted to, but if you've got a scored up block or something of that nature, you're gonna probably gonna have to start with a whole new block because this block's not gonna be bored again after you do do the 96.7 bore. So, all right. Well, with that, let's look at the crank. All right. Now we have the crank here, and I want, as you can see here, the, the rod journal is very wide, and what piston steering does is that it keeps the rod in the middle of this journal, and so it doesn't touch the walls because just like in racing, you don't want to touch the walls and because that that leads to you know things blowing up be it motors or be it cars so as you can see it's smooth it's nice and smooth now the bonus on here is that you're going to have a lot less friction because you know there's no, there's no oil is not going to build up there so your oil galley is right there and it's still covered up by the uh, rod it's just going to get out the sides a little easier and uh, that that's all you're going to have to do with that the other issue we had, other thing we had to do is, as you can see right here, on, on, on the oil galley here and here, there you had, we had to notch it just a hair. But the good thing is, what you can see here is that it comes up and it goes down, and the skirt is almost exactly to the level of the skirt. It's, it's really a nice piston setup, and it really works well. With that, that's, that's basically... Uh, why we have to piston steer because we have a wide journal and normal cars don't have as wide a journal as this um, to be honest i could not find a single motor passenger car motor that would have the rod length i needed that was this wide it was almost coming up to a point where i was going to have to go in have some rods made from somewhere china or brazil or germany um, but instead we went with the piston steering motor's complete you can you can see that they really don't move one way or the other so you're, it's really going to be um, a nice setup and it runs really smooth okay so now we know why we have to piston steer and why we should subscribe to the channel because you're enjoying all the videos I've done so far now let's find out how you piston steer and how you get your piston set up uh, to to do just that what you see here is the the rod cannot move left to right here. We've made the rod stationary to the piston as opposed to the other way where the 
basically the movement we have at the bottom there, the, the ability for it to move just a little bit one way or the other, you know, that's what your normal motor is doing this. You're, you know, you get that little bit of, uh, of looseness, so you're, you're not pinching your rod and causing it to break. You know, it, this is why, you know, it moves freely on the piston. Well, now we have it moving freely on the crank and we're with with some bushings here we've actually got it so it's it's stationary on the top so that that is what it piston steering does is and what it does and why it's done done for so here we have the pistons this is your standard two liter 1.9 piston she's pretty big big piston there And here is your shorter 2.4 piston. And as you can see, the pin heights change on there based upon the stroke. And, you know, and the rod line. Well, and in here is my 2.5 piston. You see, it's a good bit shorter than the uh, 2.4 piston, but it will, it's exactly what I need because my rod is actually a little longer as well. So that is the basic geometry differences. Let me show you one more thing. What we have here is a 3.9 liter Bitter SC piston. It's a piston that was made by Mansell uh, for the Bitters uh, back in the mid 80s. And as you can see, we are we are basically treading in, in, in the same territory when it comes to pin height and other such things. Um, these were very, very light pistons. Uh, and as you can see, they even put the weight of them on here and measured and then drilled just a little bit spot to get them balanced. And I will be doing that on these as well. I'm going to make sure that my, my uh, pistons are completely balanced so we can have a nice, uh, nice setup, as you can see here. So... Speaking of that, what about weight? So let's measure these things up and see what we got. All right, so this is a 1.9 liter uh, piston, uh, and it is at 1,456 grams. Now we have the, the 2.4. The 2.4 was lighter and came in at Looks like it came in at 1,317 grams. And then my setup. At 12, uh, right at 1,200, 1,202. 1,202, we'll call it 1,202. So there you have it. Okay, now we've got the main pieces figured out. It's time to do a clay test so we can confirm all our clearances. The pieces that I'm using uh, only come in one way. They come with an intake and exhaust setup. But the Opal is set up exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. So we, we're, we're going to need to make sure that our larger valves aren't going to interfere with our cutout and with the dishing on the piston. So what I've done here is I've used the modeling clay to fill the top of the piston to confirm our clearances. I've filled it all in there and then I'm going to go put the head and uh, set up the timing chain and set everything to TDC, rotate the motor a couple of times, and then check the uh, modeling clay to see what it looks like. Well, now, as you can see, it worked out really well, uh, we, but there is one area that was a little too close for comfort. So what I've disassembled, disassembled the motor again, and I, we had the, the uh, pistons taken back to the machine shop where we cut these troughs, as I showed earlier, um, so we could gain the clearance that we needed for the new valves. Well, thank you for watching, and I hope you've uh, enjoyed this, and I hope it was informative for you. And uh, with that, um, done. Until next time.